Hm. Aha. Das Insta-Ding. Jetzt ist sie da. Läuft nicht gut halt. Ist das nicht das Donnerstagsproblem? Okay. Ah, Chaba. Da sehen wir noch das. Who else is there? Here in the dojo. Okay, three people are watching. Let's start. Come on. Okay, today. Today we're going to practice with the jaw. I hope you have some. But you could also take your brushes off or the wiping tools or use it with the fence. Whatever you want. Okay? Yes, you must. Okay. First, do one lap as normal as usual without the weapon in hand. Come in. Be a part. <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful view in the dojo, right? With the sunbeam coming from the left. 
Fantastic. But on that picture is from the right. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> the camera is vice versa, isn't it? It shows all different. Yeah. Okay, why is that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, am I wrong? No. Can you see that? It's mirrored. It's not original. Because if I watch here, it's coming from the left. Camera should show something from the left. But in that picture, what I see, it's shown from the right side. You can see? You okay. That's how it works. Nah, it's not. <laughs> what? Am I stupid or what? <clears throat> no, actually, usually the people should see how the uh, room is. Now, if it is all in mirror, the calligraphy is completely wrong. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okay? So, but that is the first time, isn't it? No, I don't know. Yes, it is the first time, because all the other videos that I saw, they were correct. But this time, I don't know if it's just by recording, or if it is also in the stream. Because, ah, yeah, you, you can see, look, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the stream, it's on the, on, from the right. But in the monitor, it's from the wrong side. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm totally... <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> Huh? Magic! <laughs> so what is wrong with the computer? Oh, it shows something. Some... I'm talking about it and it shows some error. What is that? It was the Kingdom Reader software where it was causing an error. Oh, yeah, we'll be... I have to go to the front. Okay, this is funny. Maybe you don't have these problems with your technology using computers or whatever. Thursdays, it's always Thursdays. <laughs> the first Thursday we started doing this online Aikido training, it didn't work at all. The whole stream broke down after six minutes, 40, and we didn't even uh, notice it. And then a week later, I think we didn't have any wireless alarm, or two weeks later. So, on Thursday, something is wrong with my computer. I think it's the day in the week where it needs a break or something. I don't know. Ah, fantastic. Ah. I have, for instance, in the stream on the, uh, the tablet, I can see there was a comment from somebody, from Chapa, I think, but in the actually computer monitor, I can't see that stream, that uh, chat, strange things.
fine. Let's do a little bit of killing as well. We start from the sitting position. Right, a bit folded up from the knees first. Let's go down to the basics and take a okay. look. And from no stands. That later, because with the jaw we can also do some good technique. Okay, when was the last time we were doing some jaw here in the school? One year ago. Huh? <coughs> One year ago or something like this? No, must be two. No. One? Yeah. Okay, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, well, let's do some. We start with basic practices. So, before we do Tsudanski or Yokomi Chomibuchi, we first rotate the jaw. There's this uh, practice called Hachinokaishi. So, we are turning our hands in this uh, lead line A, like this. And actually, we are using the jaw in the same moment to rotate around the body. So if you put yourself in right hand me, midi hand me, first we only do this. Okay, so try to keep the joint and the grip quite loose. That will happen quite often. Make sure you have all your porcelain taken out of your living room because probably you will throw a few drums. Okay, and also left side. But then you change your hand to the left. Okay. And now we change a little bit. We grip like that. So this is for later when we have we prepare. So that I might we'll come to this situation. So the uh, lower end is, let's say, twice as long as the upper end, and then we rotate it from the back to the front. So as if we would take this regripping foot and also the left side. Okay, good. So now we come back to the middle with our hand. And we give the jaw to the other hand. Oh, shall we do it? No, we should start easy, not the most complicated. So I haven't done it for so long that I forgot completely how to explain. I just do it. But anyways, what we do is, if I have the thumb in this position, thumb up, this end of the jaw goes to the left and we take over with the left hand, and then it goes down to the right, and we take over with the right. Every time we change the hands, hmm. okay, now the changing is quite fast, 
so the jaw not really rolls a lot. As soon as I can grab my hands with both palms up, face upwards, we change. So here on the left side, now yeah. it comes and I take over with the left hand and now it comes to the right. We don't do the further roll, it's just half a roll. So that's why you have to let the jaw go really uh, free. Okay, you don't have to speed up too fast because then it automatically wants to go further for more rotation. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and you can either step or change position because then your hand will be better. Step forward or backwards to give yourself a better stand. Okay. Now, third, when I bring the jaw on my left side, my hand is waiting with a palm towards the ceiling, and I open my thumb. You see that? Like this. It's waiting on the side. And if I open my right hand, in the very end, the jaw is um, controlled by the thumb until it rolls over the thumb. And that's the moment, whoop, I have to balance that up, where I take over with the left hand and continue the rotation. So there is a situation I just do it without a jaw. I don't can I cannot see. you can see my hands, I hope. Where I wait on the left, I bring the jaw down with the tip to the left side, let it roll, open up the right hand, and then thumb by thumb, they come to this position, and left hand is taken over, bringing the same to the right side again. And thumb to thumb, like this bird bird hands, you take over again. Okay, I try to show very slowly. So I bring the jaw down to the, the top of the end, the stick to the left side. Now, when I crossed to the left, I open up the left hand, let roll the jaw over. I have to do it very slowly, it's very difficult, to this position, and it flips over. There's a moment where the jaw is completely out of control. In that moment, when the thumb comes to the thumb, there's nothing where, <laughs> where I control the jaw. It just comes over by itself by the energy test for the rotation. And to do that proper, we need to balance out the jaw exactly. Because if we would be outside the middle, it would not work. So you have to find the middle. Actually, first of all, you can try it out. Basically, it's very, very simple. After some moments, you feel where's the middle of the jaw. So there is the position of the hand. And we roll and give over. Sometimes it doesn't work, as you see. And the rotation becomes very fast because it's just more rotations what you have before you give over. We have to step back from the camera. <laughs> because we will throw the jaw now. You can see and laugh at home. Or try yourself, then you know what it feels. Okay, just be like that. So you start to the right. I, you want to see that from this side? No. Bring to the left, take over on the left, bring to the right. And it's also good to change the position because then your body has a better. Uh, yeah. Frame to work. Okay. Yes, there. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Be careful with your own forehead. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Now you can feel you're a little bit outside of the middle on one side, yeah. so you have to adjust it. It's not much, maybe two centimeters. And there you feel like it has it. It's out of uh, center. Yeah, here. Yeah. 
always on the design. So then you have to give the end above the end a little bit more space. So you grab less to the end because if you change, the other thumb comes to the middle of the yeah. jaw then. Okay, and then actually the first impulse is by pushing with the index finger with this uh, mm -hmm. point, the jaw down to the ground. And then you just let it roll. And when you are here again, it is the index finger that brings the jaw down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. And as you feel, it is far more simple if we are walking. Mm -hmm. So it is that I step with the right foot forward and that then pulls what comes through my body and into the hand. And then left goes forward and right goes forward, left goes forward, right goes forward. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, right backwards, left backwards, right backwards, Whoop. left backwards, forward. And backwards. We just try. We just try. We, we give it, let's say, three or four minutes. <laughs> Don't break your fingers. I do it from the side. You can go on that line so everybody can see what's actually going on. <laughs> yeah, it takes time to learn that proper. I go far too quick. I'm wondering which of our students will tell after the class, I destroyed my whole furniture. The glass shelf is done and <laughs> all the expensive porcelain from Grimm. And by the way, the real master in doing that stuff is Martin. Martin Jansen, everybody knows, I think, at least the people who are watching that channel. And he does it in different layers as well. So, of course, from the center, but also on top of your head. So it, it looks like he starts in helicopter <laughs> by going very quick. So just try a little more. Sometimes you can <clears throat> take it up. Good. Yes? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Without breaking your own toes or two. <laughs> okay, so then basic routine. One of the basic routines is Chudansky. So Chudansky, I'm not sure. I think you could we could go like this and watch it each other dive in. So Chudansky starts. In the, in the Aikido Kata for the, uh, the Joe Dori, it is always from this position, left foot forward. Of course, we practice both sides because even uh, if you could do it with a uh, Bokken as well, but it's not used because in Bokken you always place your right hand forward. But it could make sense to have 
both body sides in the same ability of um, uh, steering a tool like Joe or like Bob. In Joe, we of course do both sides. So, from this position where you uh, Joe is inside of your standing line, you take um, the jaw in front of you with a long arm. So don't bend your arm, don't push it away, just keep it very soft. And the fingers here, yeah, they are open. So it's not like this, they are just open. Because the first thing what you do is you flip up the end to your waiting hand. The waiting hand, here the right one in my case, in that case of uh, Hidari Hami position, is waiting and you just bring up the jaw. And if you are in the perfect place from your forward and your backwards hand, you should grab that way that there is no uh, jaw coming out of your hand. So the, the end of the jaw is exactly on the line of the small finger. So from there, you come up. From there, you come up. There you come up. Left side as well. And there you come up. There you come up. You come up. Okay. And if you grab the uh, back side of your hand, it's upwards. It's not sideways. It's upwards. There. There. And the other side as well. Okay, so and then for the uh, one of the basic attacks, Chudan ski, you could also go Gedan ski <laughs> or Jodan ski. You just pull back the sword until the front end is uh, within your hand. You take it a little bit backwards. You lose or you bend your knee of the red, uh, right side, pull back your left, and come forward with a sliding step and bring the jaw forward. So, one more time. And just open here. You take up. You slide to your hand. Your arm, forearm, the left arm drops in front of your uh, hips. The forward foot comes by the right one, what's supporting the whole body. And then you slide forward and you attack Chudansky. Time for the sun. Flip it up, take it back, and go forward. And in this position, both knees are bent. So you have lowered your center. One more time from this position. Take up, pull back, and Chudanski. In the end of the Chudanski, the right hand comes firmly to your uh, center, and the whole arm is on your side. Okay, you don't keep your arm in the air. It's really compact on the body. So up, back, come forward. Up, back, come forward. Up, back, come forward. Left side as well. Up, back. Up, back, forward. Take it up, pull back, and keep Chudansky. Take it up, Chudansky. And when your arm comes in front of your center, it has this position. So you can push from behind into the jaw and continue the direction of the actual impact. It is not there where you have an angle to the jaw and your forearm. Forearm is not fully in the same position, but quite down, quite almost parallel 
not really parallel, but almost parallel to the floor. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Let the uh, forward fan uh, leave. You should now. Uh, you should stabilize that with your center. <coughs> this. Okay. If I have to show that from closer, what I, I was showing. So I do it vice versa. If my arm would be there. I would need force in my whole arm. But if I bring it to the center, it's the center itself what gives this impulse. And the arm does not need to push forward. It just comes close to the body. Okay? So that's why, in the end, this position is very, very important. Exactly. And you feel it's far more connected to your center too. Yeah. That's another thing. The forward hand rotates in the end so that uh, the back of the hand is pointing to the ceiling. It's not on the side. It's like that. Yeah. And go for. And to give it a little bit more uh, range, the forward arm, if you pull back the sword, really drops down in front of the center. Okay. It's not half. It's really down. It's also not bending the elbow when the jaw comes too high. You really take it very close to your center line and then you can fall. So the acceleration range will be long. Okay, now what I see is you're trying to feel when is the limit <laughs> with the index finger. Okay, that's something what happens. As soon as you're close to the end, you drop your arm. So you follow actually with this hand the way of your jaw. So if I keep it there and want to feel first and then take it down, <laughs> it is not really natural. But if you follow, you easily find it because you're following the way you're pulling. So the pulling in the hand is actually slowing down. Okay, if you keep it there, ah, then I almost lose it. Right? Ah, and then it, uh, it is not fluent. Okay, so arm has to be very soft. Good. Uh, what you can do easily at home, if you have space or a garden, is to do that in four directions by turning either backways or frontways. So I do a ski and I rotate 90 degrees, and always if I pull back, I rotate around my standing right leg now. And then after one turn around, I go backwards. Or vice versa. And that is okay. So now you were turning while you were pulling back. Yeah. So, but 
We are turning when we are just before the strike. So going back, we just close the feet, then we rotate, and then we go and hit. Now rotate, yes. Now rotate and back. And before you do your ski, first check the direction. So visualize an opponent. So you turn around, you see the opponent, and then you go. You turn around, you see the opponent, and then you go. So it's more clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, if you go like, <laughs> it comes really, well, it was not like that, but it's uh, different. So you imagine next one is there. Now I see this and go. Now I see this and go. Now I see this and go. And go. <laughs> exactly. Rotate and then. Yeah, and especially in the end, just before you start your Chidan ski, you have to be fully in balance. Mm -hmm. You should not end in halfway already dropping yourself there. So if you turn and you <laughs> already, you're out of uh, the center line, and so here on this turn, you're fully in balance, and then you decide and you go forward. Yes, exactly. You have to use both feet. Ah. And one gives you now. Even if you pull one, you can use both yeah. to rotate, and then you go. Yeah, exactly. Therefore, the uh, heels have to be up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe if you have a, a bar chair at home, like a high chair, and a small candle, for instance, candle is better than a wood, you put the candle on the chair, not in the glass, like just maybe on the, on the paper. To simulate this situation, please stand up. You just hold your jaw like that beside you there. And Hold it on the top and just give it very, very um, lots of freedom so it becomes a pendulum and just it's perfectly straight up. So now I'm away. Let's go a bit closer to the camera. Yeah, no, come back. Okay. I'm away as far as I could reach that job with a final extent for the Chudansky. And I want to touch the job. Okay, so, but um, let's show from the other side, you go on that side. It's important that you don't, um, let's say, betray yourself by going <laughs> like this. You should do the same basic uh, technique. So take it up, pull back, extend, and try to hit the candle in your case. Well, here we hit the jaw, but... If you have a candle of that, uh, the size of the jaw, then you can use that. It's much better. So. Okay. Important is, I should not have somehow stiff hands. Because as soon as I put some stiffness into my joints, for instance, the wrist, I won't be able to hit you. I just saw it. I do the same speed, the same motion, but I put just strength into my hands. <laughs> I, cannot, <laughs> I cannot hit it. I really try, but I keep... Ah, I did, but it's not the same. You have to give the joke its own ability to find the right line. And it is not to fix it with the eyes, the point where you want to hit. Because if you fix it, you would never get it. <laughs> you just extend and see the whole situation and try to. Okay? You're going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> hmm.
Good. <laughs> <laughs> Relax your hands into stands, exactly. Shoulders also. Yes, that was soft. <laughs> That's the hits where the jaw dies because you only hit the, the side and then some edges come out and some splinters. That's why we don't do it with big force. Just don't do it too fast. Don't do too much. Mm -hmm. Just give it a little bit, not too much force because then it's not too good for the jaw and also you, you won't hit it. Really relaxed. <laughs> Even more relaxed. <laughs> Don't think of the targets, just make your motion. It's if you, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> the guessing is like, oh man, the people outside, what will they think of me? I'm not good enough. <laughs> no. Look, I hold the jaw over the line. So if your jaw is exactly in that, in that line moving, you will hit it. But as soon as you give some force mm -hmm. into the jaw, you will take it out of the line of attack. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> well, okay. That's something what you can do. If, if you have a partner or a neighbor who can hold your uh, something to, to hit, that's also funny. And yeah, as I said, it's very important not to go quick or to stiffen up. You know, I want to hit. No, you just bring the jaw forward and forward. And for sure you will find the exact line by feeling, not by wanting it. Okay, so there's some more basic routines <laughs> what we could do from here. After the Jodan ski, ski, we go backwards a little bit and bring the end of the jaw up to our head. So it's actually a defending position instead of Pointing forward, we go in back and take this position. Here, well, I prefer to put my arm on my forehand so I have a, what do you say, a good proper uh, connection to my body because then I can easily feel. It. Of course, you could also leave it free, but it's for my test, it's better like that because here sometimes the jaw flips out the hand if it, it is really hit hard and then it can be dangerous. So if you put this kind of connection you sense also with your forehead where you are. The uh, front of the jaw is knee high, what means you have to go down. If I would stand on long legs, it is almost hip high, but I need to protect also my knees. So that would be the idea now. We just go to the ski and backwards to this position. To that ski and backwards to this position. And of course, we didn't do that before. Also, from the other side. To the ski and to this position. Okay, let's do it from the side so everybody can see from the side. Don't have to go too far. It's okay if you not do it. I'm a giant and you're a dwarf now. <laughs> you should change. <laughs> okay, so take up to the ski and go backwards to protect. And then you take the other side to the ski and backwards to protect. And the position of the forward hand is as if you would help hold the tablet. It's well in the direction of the jaw because the jaw points down diagonal. My palms like this should not be like that. Really open up the palm so the jaw lies diagonal over your palm. Okay, so we don't ski and we come to put that. And then the other side, two ski and put it. Two and put it. Two down ski and put it. And repeat it a little bit. Yeah. 
Yes. If you open up the fork, the handboard is in front. Mm -hmm. That's good. But don't open up the handboard is on top. <laughs> no. So you hit and you keep this close mm -hmm. and this is open. Don't open here something. Else. Okay, from there, we're going to do a change of our hand position. Swing the jaw behind the back and come back forward with the Yoko Minutsu. That's a change of the foot position as well. So, I show it first from this side. We go to Dansky, come back. Now, I push my right hand forward until the end of the jaw is almost on the same place like my elbow, so elbow could touch. Now I swing the jaw behind my back, close my feet, re-grip with the left, and come forward with your kumilus. Okay? One more time. I show it from the side so everybody can do it. First, forward, go backwards, shift your right hand, take back your left foot, and come forward. And then, of course, the same on the others. Choose C, backwards, shift, your community from the left. Okay? No, you go backwards. Take the ah. forward back while the hand is going forward, the feet is going back. Okay, and what I just said, that's you don't take the jaw in the hand, you just let it go or drop behind your back. So it is there. It hangs in my hand, my hand is quite loose, and the jaw is to the back. Now I bring it over the shoulder, three grip, and then I attack. So don't try to steer by using your hands too much. One, two. Now, here it hangs, bring it over the shoulder, over the shoulder, re grip, and fall. And you brought it wide, big distance, yeah. so it was too far mm -hmm. on the elbow wide. That's actually the position for the hands. Okay, now slide a little bit forward with the left. Oh, yes, now let hang it, hang it, yes. And then you come over the shoulder and before you actually strike, you already grip, we grip the left hand to the end, yes. Okay, look, I was not so precise by uh, describing what's actually uh, happening when I take the jaw behind my back and then come with you. Because I was saying you should bring the right hand down, okay? But in the same time, the left hand oh. pushes the jaw up. So both hands are working, they're coming together. Now my left hand is in this height. I don't take down, I just let go and let it wait because then I can re-grip immediately and come forward again. Mm -hmm.
Yes, especially if you hit. That was obvious in the last motion. When your jaw came over your shoulder, you were pushing the right hand up instead of dropping them down and then pull the toe forward to the position. So it's not arms, it's center. It takes the rotation and the hands are sent forward, not up, because then you get a better feeling for the direction and for the actual energy of that. So let it drop and yes. Okay, so um, it is already five minutes to eight. We didn't do a lot today, and I just had the idea why not continue your practice on Thursdays, Kenjin to practice on Saturday, and regular Aikido practices on Monday, so we can continue a little bit of that. Now, I we just have a, uh, have a view on what happens next. So, if you have a partner, you can copy or uh, let's say move in the same moment with the partner so you have to go here you have to take the difference uh, and then we just do the same speed the same motion okay you come forward you come backwards and we go your commute and then the other side oh, I never did this. yes you did you come forward go backwards and around Okay. So we're mirroring our motion all backwards and around. Doesn't matter. We just we just do that. Forward and around. Yeah. Okay. So now next step is we get closer and come out of the line, but we're doing the same thing. Come, come closer. So we are just two meters apart from each other. Now, because I want to hit your hips, I come a little bit from the side. So we are from the side. Now, I want to protect towards this um, line. That's why I go a little bit to the side again. And now I want to come around your place, so I go a little bit side again. Okay? Or vice versa, now we come back to the original place where we started. So I want to come there, pull out the line, change, and attack. One more time. Let's just go for it. And the other side. It's Yes, just okay. <laughs> so now we could also change side with all the every little step. So or well, with the first at least, we could also say, I just I don't want to go there. I want to come from the center, so I don't come from the right, I come from the left to end. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with the first attack, we go to the left side, and after that we go to the right. Okay? And one there, and go, and then back, and other side. And come on up here, and go, and attack. Okay. So, next step, and that is what, what we actually want to come to, to do something like Kumijo, so where we interact with it. We just start differently. When I start, you just wait, okay? Yep. Or you just go back to this position before you actually do Chudansky. From here, I start, I want to attack. Now you go, no, don't move. Just go in the, in the beginning. Huh? Now you come from here and I change to the position of defending. Now you change to the position of defending and finish with the Yokumi. Okay, so the only thing what we changed was when you start, that's a little bit later. So I start, take up the jaw, attack, now you take distance a little bit, and you attack. I defend, 
I attack. And you attack. Okay. And because of my last attack is Yokumunuchi, you should elevate a little bit your defending position. You see my jaws coming from there, so you don't wait here. You go a little bit up uh -huh. with your jaw to defend yourself. Okay? One more time. Mm. So I go one. Uh -huh. You're gone. Okay, I don't reach you. I'll go away. And you go there. One more time the right side and then we try the left side. <laughs> oh, you attack. You attack. Yeah, go outside to the. Yes, now you want to do Yoko Minuti. Okay. Left side. Yes, you attack. <laughs> you attack. Hmm. Yes. You have to go. <laughs> One more? Yeah. Left side. Or right side? Left. Left. Okay. You just attack. In the moment where you, you can decide where you want. Maybe it's more simple to think from here because I open it. Or I open it like this, as you want. But I wait. Okay. Yes. Well, now we did already what we wanted to do for the next. So from there on, we can can do a lot of stuff. And of course, what's also possible with the Joe is the um, Aikijo Yodori, when you have the Joe and attack, and I take it away, or when I offer you the Joe and you grab it and you lead into throwing tactics. That's the next step then for the next Thursdays. So another uh, yeah interesting pool of material to practice on. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, I hope you're still healthy and at some point we can meet each other again and practice together physical without video system <laughs> and then uh, yeah until that please enjoy uh, the beautiful springtime in Germany it's very nice uh, but I bet also wherever you are, it's very nice. So take care. See you soon. I got okay.